Hello and welcome to the next wave of digital video. I'm Tony Reale. And I'm Ben Carlson. And as you guys probably know, we've been doing a lot of virtual production stuff lately. And that includes also uh, using our, our um, motion control system to integrate that into uh, virtual production. It allows us to do pre-programmed, uh, you know, laid out moves that we can just keep cycling through. It makes things a lot easier for that. Um, I use, I have a, the Kessler Cinedrive system that I've had for many years. It's, it's really great. It allows me a lot of flexibility in uh, building up different systems and scaling it down. To, it's it's, it's kind of like a Lego uh, set for, for, for um, uh, motion control. Um, I also have their second shooter system and I've used that for uh, just kind of going around and uh, doing interviews and stuff that was more basic but didn't need the full setup of Cinedrive. Um, and since then, Kessler has come out with a Cine Shooter system, which is kind of a cross between their second shooter and the Cinedrive. So it has a lot of the features of, of Cinedrive, but it's able to be um, using cabling systems like Ethernet cables, which are much less expensive than the proprietary cables they had before. And um, it's, it's a, a little bit more scaled down of a system, but still very, very capable. And uh, Kessler had reached out to us and said, hey, we know you guys have both of our systems, but we want to hear what you think of uh, the Cine Shooter because I haven't had a chance to work with it. And also to test it out in virtual production and see how that can work with it and um, to potentially just showcase how easy it is to use something like the Cine Shooter in virtual production. So we're doing an unboxing. I, I, I don't do these often, but... It feels like Christmas. It does. So we have not even broken the seal yet. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So I'm sure I'll, I'll trim out some of the fat along here, but you get to experience it with us. Oh boy. There is some packaging. <clears throat> all right. Okay. Where should we start? At, at the beginning. Let's, uh, with beginning. all of it. It's yep. a very good place to start. Yep. Uh, let's start with the big black box. Let's start with the big black box. There we go. All right. Slide that away. And we shall open said big black box. Oh. All right, a Kessler sticker. I have a lot of these actually. I put them on, it's, they're nice, I put them on cases in that way. Because I've got a lot of the Pelican cases. Right. And it's easy to know that yeah. that's the thing. Exactly where it is, perfect. Quick start guide. Who needs that, right? Yeah. That's what know. these videos are for. Yeah, all right, cool. So we have, here's the uh, V-mount battery plate. I told them we have V-mounts. <clears throat> Here we go, quick release plate. Version two, I don't have any of the version two, so I'm wondering what they changed with the version two. Probably could go look. I have a lot of the version one, so those are on almost all my Kessler gear because they are very robust, very um, very quick in hand in the name. Like yeah. this giant plate just snaps on and it's easy to just clamp things on there instead of having to Put them in and then tighten it on the side. You know, I like them. They're they're superior in many ways to a regular tripod plate. Well, and just I mean something you notice right off the bat is they were able to save. I mean it's hefty. I mean it's very sturdy, but mm -hmm. they were able to save weight and incorporate design into adding some threaded bolt holes um, and non-threaded. So I think it'll be easier to mount more accessories. Well, as it looks you're like they also have unless they attach that. It comes, I think the pan axis comes with the standard um, plate adapter already. Oh, great. So I'm wondering if that's, if they just straight up include that. I don't know, but I do know that this is how I have all of my heads attached. So I can quickly switch between those on all my stuff. Hence the term quick release. So one of the things a Cine shooter has that's different than either the second shooter or Cine drive is it has this UI control right on the front here. So you can set your shots up right on here. With second shooter, you had like a control box that you had to then wire into the head. Um, and with Cine drive, uh, you could, if you had the DCC, which is the, the digital control center, um, you could control it with that. But again, that was another box that you had to hook up right. to it. Um, again, I love all that, but this is just neat that it's all self-contained. Um, and we could pop on that battery plate right there and then everything is just completely self-contained. On the back we see Bluetooth and wireless Wi-Fi. So nice. I know there's an app that I downloaded. I need to try that later. Perfect. Power adapter, USB-C cable, probably for software updates, for more updates. Yeah. 
set that over there. Now, Tony, I mean, they have a wealth of information and, and uh, features on the app. Why would you want something here? Like, what would be the benefit of that versus like a controller? So, um, having this completely uh, on the head makes it really easy to just set up a quick move. Um, sometimes, if you, especially if you're doing interviews, interviews are, are that different differentiation between um, is it is it worth setting this up or not? Sure. Um, Cine Drive for me, a lot of times the answer is no. I, it's it's not worth setting it, uh, that up for an interview. I used to do it back when we first got it, uh, but then Second Shooter became that tool. But then again, with Second Shooter, I still had to plug in the module and all that. Um, having the control right on the head is just less cables dangling around. Sure. Um, and uh, and I just like that sleek design of it. But again, the app does exist, so be curious to, to try both of those yeah. things out. Awesome. But sometimes when you just need to do something quickly, it's nice to have the UI there as yeah. an option. All right, what's next? All right, okay, all right, here we go. Right. Uh, let's take a look at this guy. The heavy duty support module. So this is something that they said they were gonna make first in the drive. I saw a couple uh, prototypes in the wild, but I never saw one that actually made it to the market. So hmm. I should follow up with the situation. Maybe. Sure. But regardless, this is great. This is the heavy duty support module, which is there to just even out the weight um, of the whole system. So there's some assembly required sea store for details on this. <laughs> but the idea behind this is right here. All right, so we, we put that on the head. Yep. And then we've got a lot of weight that's that's hanging out this way. We also have potentially some flex that can happen here. You know, this is very robust. I don't see it happening too much, but um, the HD support bracket is designed to kind of even out the overall um, weight and support of uh, the center shooter head. Okay. So what that looks like is. Oh, wow. This part attach right here uh, with these rods. So the rods will space it out so they're the correct distance apart. And then the HD, this replaces this part. So this comes out, that then slides right in there. So then you can mount the camera on there and you just see how much more robust and you know, balanced the head tends to be. So this is a nice option for heavier cameras. It evens out the weight. I don't know 100% how necessary it is on a, on a given time, but I will, I will, I prefer having a head that's that's right more balanced than, than that. This is more compact for sure, easy yeah. to move around, but you know, if I'm, sometimes I'm gonna be putting my red on here, so it'll be nice to have that. But that said, there is one other module in there that what you have to have this uh -huh. in order to use. This is one I've been most looking forward that to. One. So this is this is a big game changer. Something that I can't do with with Cine Drive at all. Um, and I can't remember if they did ever. They were talking about releasing a roll access, but they. I don't know if they did. So, but now we have it for Cine Shooter, and it is really cool. So this adds another whole axis of motion. Axie, axis? Ax, axi, axum. axum. Axum is, we're going with axum. Okay. I don't think that's right, I but it sounds up. way I, I cooler. The, I feel like I use the wrong one. As I mentioned before, uh, every, all the cabling in uh, Cine Shooter is using ethernet. So that makes it a heck of a lot cheaper to replace cable or to, well not, this is hardwired in, but to like get extension cables and all that kind of stuff, it's just a heck of a lot easier. Cine Drive used, I don't know what the name of it was, but it was a very proprietary cable, and each of the cables for it costs like 200 bucks a cable, and I have a couple dozen cables, so do the math. And they have a very magic power that they attract feet, so that anytime <laughs> you're walking on set, inherently yeah. your feet are gonna wanna step on them. Which... I ordered uh, the, uh, uh, the cord covers, just mainly to protect the Cine Drive, like other stuff, HDMI cables, power cables, those can be replaced, the Cine Drive ones, I don't prefer those to be stepped on. So, so now that we can do ready to um, more readily accessible Ethernet cables, that just takes a little bit yeah. less and of again, the mental for, load off. For the off average of. user, it's like, because there, there are times you can rig this in a, in a way that you need to have extra length. Right. Um, 
because uh, especially we've only been talking about the head, but you want to put the head on the slider. Right. You need you need that axis uh, of motion. So uh, this uh, it can requiring the the heavy duty plate. Let's slide onto here, and then now instead of it being like this, it's now like this, and then this rotates right along here. So then we would use this plate and slide it in right here. So the original plate goes there. The only downside to the system is fundamentally the fact that because the roll axis has to exist somewhere, it then puts it back to where you can mount the camera. Sure. So right now I could put the camera, you know, I could put a, a beefier camera on there if I'm shooting with my red or whatever like that, and I could build it out. Here, we're probably gonna have to use much shallower cameras. The red, maybe if I took the battery off and it might work, I don't know, we'll have to test it out, but you know, that this is basically the depth of the camera that I could mount. Right. Get a feel sure. for that. So, but having this is amazing because there's two, there's two things that this is handy for. First of all, obviously doing rolls. Yeah. Um, but also, if you're trying to adjust, uh, do instead of doing a perfectly level move, or you want to maybe move it at a at a bit of an angle, right? You can just quickly adjust the roll on that move instead of having to level out everything sure. else on their head. Sure. So, that's just a neat feature to have. So. I like having this as an option. I'm glad that they made it, and uh, I'm excited. Yeah. With it. All right. Awesome. What else? What's next? Um, we got ooh. All right. So Little this guy. this also excited me. This is something. Whenever I've set up a move with either second shooter or Cinedrive, uh, with uh, with Cinedrive, it was very much a get. You got to get the software up and running. Then you gotta calibrate the axes, axis, axes? Axiom. Axiom? Yep. Um, and then in order to like figure out that position, it's slide the slider over, now slide the tilts, now slide the dolly. You know, it could take you 30 seconds to a minute to get the camera in the first position that you want it to. So this attachment is very smart and uh, uh, I think it, you know, it's just incredibly clever. The idea behind it is when you push down on this button, you push down this red button here, it basically releases the, as I understand it, I, I haven't tested this yet, but in the videos that I've watched, uh, it kind of releases the motors, uh, you know, the electrical control of, of it. And it just allows you to then, cause like I can, I can rotate it freely here, but if I'm, sending power to it, it's the motor is going to be seized up. So sure. basically you're, you're pushing that button to let the motors release and then I can manually slide it and reposition it and get it completely locked into the right position that yeah. I want. And I let go of the button and then I can say that's my start move and then I go to the next position, there's my end move and then hit record or, or hit, hit go and then, it, and then it goes. Way the heck faster than right. having, even, even using this, uh, this uh, D-pad here, you know, slide, to the until left. so then you know just being able to just physically position it and then like oh sure that's that's a cool feature so yeah when i saw this i'm like i gotta have this because yeah. this will make setup a heck of a lot faster and again after having motion control for several years been well close to 10 years now that we've had motion control um these are all the little things that might get in the way of me wanting to use it right so right. Um, even though like for me cine drive is probably still going to be my main go-to studio motion control system this, this again, having the roll axis, this is gonna be some stuff that I can only do with this. Um, but then also the portability of this, uh, you know, for, for a while I was like, do I wanna set up Cinedrive and then tear it down? This is gonna be 100% my go-to. Yeah, portable absolutely. System. Even over second shooter, because again, the control system, everything, it's, it's a lot faster to set up than second yeah, shooter. Yeah. And I can put a beefier camera on here than I can with second shooter. Sure. And I mean, that's one of the, like you said, that's one of the big hindrances that we've run into in uh, pos positioning this for clients is we might take half a day just trying to get that single move. Now that we have everything incorporated right here, plus with the quick release handle, that makes, I mean, on-set production so much quicker, so much easier, and so much more intuitive uh, to be able to just set up, get the shot without compromising time, but also getting a more creative shot and allowing us to to stretch our, our creativity a little bit further. Mm -hmm. All right, is there anything else in there? There's one last thing. All right, uh, mystery, so, mystery black box. Mystery black box. Oh boy. All right, so we have, this is the Fizz. The Fizz? Focus Iris Zoom Motor. So 
again, you gotta if you're gonna control everything on the camera, you also gotta be able to control uh, the focus. Sure. You know, everything uh, on the camera. You gotta program and move the camera. You, you know, you might have a good camera with good autofocus, but that may not be what you need. Right. You know, autofocus isn't always like sometimes you need it to to do um, a very specific rack across at a certain time or whatever it may be. Yeah. So. Again, having the focus control is is really great, um, and again, this integrates directly into the system. So, you've got this supports up to five axes of motion um, built into it. So, we've got pan, we've got tilt, we got the roll, and then we have uh, slide and then fizz. And again, that's CineDrive. You can go a couple dozen. I forget sure. exactly how many. Yeah. But and I've done some pretty cra crazy elaborate things. But for a lot of people, that's not necessary. Like, yeah. This is enough. Yeah. So. All right, well, after a little bit of setup, we are operational. Ta-da! So, um, yeah, this is CineShooter, and uh, we've got a camera here to kind of show you the, the interface of it a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, so this is, you know, your basic setup. you got a three-foot slider. This is their Cine slider, uh, CineShooter. We're using the FX6. I was excited that we just literally, just barely, in fact, let's see if I pick this camera off here. It just literally <laughs> <laughs> just fit right at the edge there. So that's that's a plus. Uh, I don't know how long the, uh, you know, I can't put a bigger battery on there, but I mean, I can still run it off of uh, you know, external power or something sure. like that. Yeah. So, but still the fact that it works is, is pretty exciting. So um, first and foremost, when we boot up the software here, uh, we're presented with the current version number, and then we hop into the menu and we can choose between run, or connection or other stuff. So we'll go into run and we'll just do program move, which will be a basic setup. We'll do two keyframes and now set keyframes. So again, as I've mentioned before, I can use the little dial here and move it around. But the feature that I'm super excited about is we push down on this button here and I can slide it manually and position it. And if I let go of that button, so I'm gonna let go of it, I can't really do that. So I push that down. Now we can, Find a position, and let's even do a roll. So here, I'll hold that. Actually, for the roll, it might be easier to use the control panel. So let's move that over so it's able to see it better. That is nice that you get the flexibility of both. Right. So uh, I, uh, I noticed if you double tap the shift button here, it switches between the two main controls uh, axes that you'll be controlling with the pan and or the uh, your, your D pad here. So. Uh, we're going to uh, use the ro this for roll. Now, if you press up and down, it's kind of slow. If you hold shift down, it speeds up. So we'll just do a crazy roll axis that we would never do, but hey, maybe <laughs> we would. All right, so now this is number one. So it says set first keyframe. So I click in, and now it says sec set second keyframe. So I push this button down again, move it on over. Out of the way. Moving on over, and then we'll pan it like this. I suppose I'll move this camera so you can see it better. Uh, we'll tilt up, and then using the wheel, we will, or using the D pad, we'll go ahead and rotate the roll axis like this. I'm not currently using the focus motor, um, that's right here. A couple of reasons. First of all, I didn't take the time to rig up. Uh, a rod clamp system on here. Second of all, the FX6 has amazing autofocus, so a lot of times I just rely on that. But anyways, this was just a test to make sure everything's working and show you how it works. So now we would set second keyframe, I would click into the button, and we can choose here whether we want to loop it, scrub it, run once. Um, in this case, we'll just do run once. So go ahead and move your hand because it's going to be cruising over. Coming quick. And then we check the duration. Do we want this, you know, 20 seconds? Uh, the ramp up speed, so whether we want to just immediately start or if we want to gently get up to speed. And then we would select run. So we'll do a 20 second move. It's now gonna move over. And look at that. That move is happening over 20 seconds now. That is really cool. I mean, just thinking of the dynamic shots that you can get mm -hmm. from a very compact system. And how fast that was, again. With CineDrive, even second shooter, it'd still be a little bit more work to just dial in that exact move. Yeah. Speaking of second shooter, um, in the set that they sent me, they were they uh, forgot to include a slider motor. Um, 
I just contacted Eric and they're gonna be shipping that over. But cool thing is this is my second shooter slider motor and it plugged right in using the same thing. So if you have second shooter uh, components, they work. So that's good to know. How easy is it to find these out and around the second shooter system? Um, I mean, they're more common because they were more inexpensive. Sure. Uh, and Cine Shooter was based upon that. It was kind of on the marriage of Cine Drive and Second Shooter because there were still some things that Second Shooter was limited to. In fact, I have it right here. <clears throat> so I'll just show you guys real quick. So this is this is what Second Shooter looked like, um, and it's it's great. You know, this is this is your pan and your tilt right in here, um, and then uh, you would then connect it to this control module that would then allow you to pan and tilt. The thing about it is this has up to three axes of, of control. So you can do pan, tilt, or slide. Um, if you wanted to do focus, you'd have to have a second controller, which I do have, and that you have to then marry the two together on the mat. It's three axes is great, but the second that you need that focus, um, ending in the fourth axis, it was a lot more complicated to rig it all up. Sure. Cine Shooter does up to five just with, uh, with the system as it is. So that's, yeah. that's really nice. What if you want to do more than just like two keyframes? Can we do multiple? So Cine Shooter will do up to three keyframes just in the UI, but thank you for reminding me about the app. So let's let's try this right here. No, I haven't tried this yet. All right, so we're gonna boot up the app here. Let's connect. So let's see. Did we show up there? Whoop, oh, there we go. Oh boy. Look at that. Oh man. So we can tilt. That's pretty nifty. But I, yeah, aux one is currently set as the roll. Go like that. So we'll level it back out. And there, whoop, that's a thing. So that's live motion, time lapse, stop motion. That's neat. Wow. So There's a is, lot built into the, to yeah. the app. So, and then manual move. So set up, move. All right, so let's see what, what is aux two? Nothing. Here's slider. Okay, so we're gonna move the slider over there. We'll pan over like that. And maybe we'll tilt up like that. One thing I don't like about this, I'm just wary that it'll smack into it, you know. Sure. So, still doing the manual moves might be good. So now in here we'll notice it says, record keyframe at zero of 12. Oh, wow. So we'll go ahead and record a keyframe there. And then we'll just go ahead and slide over this way. We'll pan over a bit. And maybe tilt down a little bit like that. And maybe add some roll in there just for kicks and giggles. Record keyframe, so two of 12. All right, so we oh. just recorded now two of 12 possible keyframes. I'm gonna click view keyframes. And so now it shows me uh, them as, as buttons that I can go to. So if I click keyframe one, there's the first keyframe that we had. If I hit keyframe two, now it's moving to the second keyframe. And we could easily go, now you notice it's not going exactly in the motion. Um, you know, it's not going to the speed, it's just as quickly as possible going to that first keyframe. So it's faster for the slider to go than it is for the pan axis, so you know that that happens quicker. But, so we can do up to 12 keyframes in here, which is really, really cool. Uh, we can adjust the transition time and uh, enable or disable mini event mode. So one of the things that's really neat about this that we're gonna play around with a bit is using this, you know, we're talking about using this for motion control, but you can use this as uh, like a PTZ or pan tilt zoom head. Um, you know, we currently don't have that focus motor hooked up to it, but we could be using that for, for both focus or for zoom. Oh, um, yeah. And if you got rid of the roll axis, you could have two, again, uh, being able to do up to five axes, you could have a, a focus and a zoom motor. So if we, let's just say, we'll, let's, we'll move the slider over that way a little bit more, and then we'll pan, we'll tilt, maybe right in there. Um, I don't know, let's, let's do something different than we had before. And then we'll, let's tilt down a bit. So we're right in there. So that's, now we're recording another keyframe here, and then we'll go back to view keyframes. So I'm gonna do, we'll go to keyframe two, now the camera went to this position. Now I'll do keyframe one. Now the camera went to that position. Now I'll do key three and three. The camera went to that position. So what was happening, if you want to think about it like this, is that say you were a camera operator and you were shooting an event and you had, you know, uh, 
here's the, the, the lead singer, and then we've got the drum kit over mm -hmm. here, and we have the, uh, um, the piano player over there. You could program all these moves in and have them locked off to each position, and then you just boop, push the one button, now we're on the drummer. Boop, push this button, now we're, now we're on the keyboard player. So like that, you know, completely different than motion control, yeah. but a really, really neat feature. And it's something we're gonna play around with a bit too and experiment with to see what we can use that. Absolutely. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, there's also stop motion, right. um, which I've always wanted to play around with and I've never had the patience for, but <laughs> it's something that's very, very integrated in here. Um, and also you've got, let's see, where was it? Stop motion, live motion, time lapse, of course. Right. You know, always adding motion and time lapse takes it from average to, to better. Extraordinary. I mean, yeah. It's almost like an expectation nowadays. If you have a locked off time lapse, it's got to have some of really time lapse. <laughs> So yeah, this app is pretty neat, um, and it's you know it's it's nice to be able to quickly set something up just directly on the head, but then have a lot more flexibility in sure. the app. Yeah, um, I would love to see them maybe improve the UI. It's a little drab at this point, but it's functional. It's very I can't functional. Complain about the functionality. That is the Cine Shooter unboxing and setup. Uh, I'm sure you guys are going to see this more on our channel. Yeah. And uh, if you have any questions about it, leave it in the comments below and I'll answer what I can or redirect them to, to Kessler, of course. But uh, stay tuned because I think we got a lot more planned. Absolutely. Thank you.